If you guys would like to pick up any of the figures you've seen in today's video, go over to Ringside Collectibles and use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Let's rank these fools. What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are finishing up our two-in-one reviews on the brand new AEW Unrivaled Collection Series 1, and we are finishing it off with number five and six in the series, Chris Jericho, Brandy Rhodes, and also in this video, we will be ranking AEW Unrivaled Collection Series 1 from worst to best, in my own personal opinion, so definitely stick around for that. But today, guys, we do have two figures. You know, we already have a ringside exclusive little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho, so I'm figuring that figure will be very, very similar to this one except it doesn't have all the, you know, bubbly and, and AEW championship and all of that stuff. And then Brandy kind of seems kind of plain, you know. I, I, I'm not really even seeing accessories with this guy, this this girl, this lady. So that's something I'm actually interested to see. This is our first female figure from AEW Unrivaled, so I guess we're just going to have to see how that goes. Bug, get out of here, damn jackass. But you know, we're going to find out together. We're going to find out how the women's figures go, how they compare to a Mattel, and we're going to rank AEW Unrivaled Series 1 all together. So let's go ahead and dive into it, guys. As you guys can see, front viewing window here, you got a lot of entrance gear and stuff with Chris Jericho. Spinning to the right, you have the AEW logos, 5 and 6 in the series, as you guys can see there. Nice photo of Brandy and Chris Jericho right there. Spinning it around, you got the Le Champion right there, very similar to his little bit of the bubbly. You have Brandy holding the sledgehammer from Double or Nothing, both of these figures are from Double or Nothing. And another thing that I wanted to mention is I'm actually interested to see going forward if every figure will be from a specific event. I think that'll be interesting to see as we go. But we have... Oh. But we have the rest of the figures in the way that we've already reviewed. You got the Young Bucks, Cody, and Kenny Omega. Spinning it around, you got the other AEW logo as well as Chris Jericho and Brandy Rhodes picture on the front. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and crack Brandy Rhodes and Chris Jericho out of their packaging. Hit it with that Judas effect. So here's Brandy Rhodes and Chris Jericho out of their packaging, guys. Looking pretty swell, you know. I do have some complaints about the football game, but we'll, we'll get into all of that. Now, the first thing that I'm noticing immediately about the figures is you guys can probably already see. I mean, look at Chris Jericho and all of his gear and stuff that he gets, and then look over here at Brandy. I don't know why she didn't get any accessories whatsoever. Now, you could say, you know, uh, she could have came with a sledgehammer, or maybe she could have came with, you know, not only the sledgehammer, but a piece of the throne, or the weight belt and the sledgehammer and interchangeable hands and then Cody could have came with his entrance gear. I don't know. I, I, there was definitely a way to do it but I don't like that she doesn't have anything whatsoever. And I also thought that with every figure we were supposed to get interchangeable hands. Now that may be something that we get later on with every figure but just not right now. But I don't know. I guess we'll just have to find out about that. See how all that goes. But anyways guys, let's go ahead and dive into Brandy Rhodes first since she doesn't have any accessories. And then after that we will get into Chris Jericho and his accessories. And then we are going to rank Unrivaled Collection Series 1 from worst to best. Alright guys, so getting into Brandy Rhodes first, starting out with her head sculpt. Now, I think this is a pretty solid head sculpt for her. Um, I, I think that it definitely looks like her. The likeness is definitely there. I love that the, we got the purple ombre and the highlights going through her hair. And I like this. I like this a lot. Now, you could say maybe the skin tone's a little bit too light. I mean, I think it works. It's not like too terrible or anything like that, but I think that it is a little bit too light maybe. But I guess that's kind of what the line is so far right now with the skin tones. Like, they're a little bit too light maybe, a little bit too pale for their actual skin tone. But I like what we got going on with the head sculpt and stuff like that. Going down into the torso, she does have like this snake skin pattern sort of going on with blues and whites. It's not as detailed as the actual gear that she wore and stuff. It's kind of reminding me of a hardcore, you know, Mattel uh, women's figure with this torso. It seems very, very similar. We will do an articulation standpoint and compare it to Mattel at one point in the video. I'll probably compare it to the Ultimate Edition Ronda or something like that. But she does have the double jointed arm. She's got all of her stuff going on. All this stuff is painted on here, so the gear is not sculpted on of the torso. It is painted, which we've seen before with Mattel. But going down, you got the nice colored trunks and everything. Going down into the legs, her boots are sculpted. Long white boots that look really good. Kind of remind me of a Marvel Legends, like, a superhero or women's action figure or something like that, which is pretty cool. I like the way this has got going on. You got the heels on there. I'm kind of worried about standing up and stuff, because heel figures are usually super hard to stand up, or figures that have heels. I guess it's like, you know, Randy Orton is harder to stand up uh, because he's a heel. But I like the sculpt going on with these boots. I like the face sculpt and stuff like that. I hate that she doesn't have any accessories, but I still think it's a pretty solid, you know, women's figure stand alone. You know, she's not an in-ring talent by any means, really. But for a manager role, sticking her to up next to Cody, I think this definitely works out a lot. But that pretty much does it for Brandy, guys. So let's get into some women figure comparisons. 
So starting out with our Brandy Rhodes figure comparisons, guys, I do have the Ultimate Edition WWE Ronda Rousey figure, and I think Ronda Rousey is 5'7", and Brandy Rhodes is 5'6", so with these heels on, she should be higher than her, and she actually is by an inch, so I guess these are supposed to be 2-inch heels, which totally works out. I think this scales pretty well, especially given her, you know, height and stuff like that, but these figures are very eerily similar. It's kind of crazy how similar they are. Now, you guys can see here by the articulation, like, she can't crunch forward that much, especially especially uh, since her bottom part of her torso is not the same as the men's figures, okay? The women's figure here with Brandy does not have a soft torso, and it's not on the inside. See, the men's figures, their soft torso is like inside the crotch, so when you push it forward, this can actually lean forward more, as you guys are seeing that little separation right there. It's it's like the same width as the crotch piece, so it can't like, you know, bend forward as much as a male figure, and it's pretty much like identical to this. Like, it's a literal, like, it feels like the same company made both of these figures, which is kind of crazy. They both have the upper thigh cut. They both have the double jointed knees. Really good double jointed knee right there. And she has lower boot rotation which you love to see right there. It blends in well so there's no craziness going on. She does have the heels that go up and back. And she has a good ankle pivot here which is kind of ridiculous. She has double jointed arms which she can, you know, hit herself in the face, claw or face off, whatever you want to say. And she also has the ratchet joints in her shoulder which can go up now, I don't think as high as the men's. Not quite as high as the men's I'd say, but pretty Pretty close and then she can look down pretty far and she can look up a little bit because of the you know the hair piece back there but I'm pretty impressed with this women's figure man it's kind of like every unrivaled women's figure will be similar to a uh, a ultimate edition Ronda Rousey which you guys know that I absolutely love so that is beautiful to see man and I was right about these heels they actually are very difficult to stand up like you got to get it you know you got to get that hoe in there and get the legs straight and stuff like that it is kind of a pain to stand up but it is because of the uh, obvious heels and every Mattel women's figure that has heels is also difficult to stand. It's just the nature of heels. I mean, they're, they're hard enough to walk in as a human being, let alone an action figure. And then for your AEW Unrivaled figure comparison, here is Brandy up next to Cody, and I think they look pretty good together. I think that looks good. I like the height right there. Looks nice. They can hold hands, go to the ring, Iron Man champion. Who knows if we'll see Brandy in MDT, but I still think it's pretty cool right there. So there is Brandy up next to her husband, Cody. And since we already covered the articulation, guys, let's go ahead and dive into Chris Jericho's accessories. So getting into Chris Jericho's accessories, guys, you actually get a bit of stuff right here. Now, Cody Rhodes and Chris Jericho are the chases in the set, and I believe that Chris Jericho is the 1 in 1,000 figure, which is, I think, the rare and not the super rare, or it could be the chase and then the rare version. I think Cody's the rare and then he's the chase. I, I don't know. But you do have this nice hat right here, which is a nice soft plastic and stuff. It is in a red color. A red color, Brad? Are you are you on some jackassery? That is a black hat. That's a black hat. But if you guys want to see what this looks like on the figure right there there it goes and this also can fit the ringside exclusive little bit of the bubbly jericho if you guys just wanted to do that or something like that but there is the figure hat on the figure next up we have interchangeable hands now out of the packaging he does have mic holding hands that are in skin tone but here is his black entrance glove hands which look pretty good same exact hands except they are colored in black and they actually look like they have some sculpt on them that look like gloves so it's not like they just painted skin tone hands black they actually have some sculpting in there that look like gloves so that's a good detail that they got he also comes with his scarf that has some nice silver and black going on with it. It looks good on the figure. You guys already saw what the jacket and the scarf look like on the figure, so I'm not going to do that at this moment, but I think this scarf is a nice accessory. You always like to see cloth goods. And then for his jacket, it's got a ton of details going on, like with the studs and the spikes and the belts and the loops and everything going on with it, but you guys know as well as I do, it's pretty much just like any other rubber coat we've seen. It hinders articulation, and if it's just going to sit on the shelf, it's not a big deal, but if you want to pose this guy around, probably will not be happening while wearing this jacket and I do not like rubber accessories like this so this probably will never be used but if you guys are just going to use it for display it totally works out but I definitely prefer the Young Bucks style jacket but the only thing is, is you can't really get all of these details in a cloth jacket it, at least that's what I've heard from all action figure makers but uh, yeah there is Chris Jericho's jacket 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 and that pretty much does it for Chris Jericho's accessories, guys. So with that being said, let's dive into Chris Jericho himself. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so diving into Chris Jericho himself, we do have a different head sculpt that we saw than the ringside exclusive little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho, but I still think the likeness is there, and I like. I think a lot of people are going to argue that they like this head sculpt better, and I think I'm right there with you. I think I do like this head sculpt better. You know, he is grimacing or, or pissed off here, but I still think it looks like Jericho. I think it looks nice. This is the same torso, arms. I actually think this figure is the exact same from the neck down. Like, all the deco is the same. All the pants are the same. Everything is the same as a little bit of bubbly Chris Jericho with the big tongue on the boots and you got the tattoos and everything going on. So it is exactly the same except for the head sculpt which is pretty cool. Doesn't include all the accessories. Doesn't include the AEW championship. So if you guys want to track that stuff down I would definitely do so. You can go over to Ringside Collectibles and pick that up using promo code MDTOYS. But this figure is virtually the exact same and all of that good stuff. Now if you guys want to know about articulation we do cover it in that little bit of the bubbly but I'll run through it real quick so you guys will know. Now he can look down pretty decently he can't look back that much because of the hair piece, so that is unfortunate. Shorter haircuts for different guys like Cody and, you know, guys in future, you know, lines and stuff like that. Orange Cassidy, guys like that will probably have better head articulation because of the long hair molds and stuff. But he can do the diving headbutt. You get the 360 all the way around. Bicep swivel here. He does have good double jointed elbows, which are always great to see. He can grab the back of his ponytail right there. Now, as far as ab crunch goes, he can bend over all the way right there. And I think my top port, yeah, I, uh, oh my God in heaven. So yeah, you can't pop that apart. Not a big deal there, but you do get a lot of forward lean right there, which is very nice to see. He is on ball joints on the legs like all AEW figures. You get the upper thigh cut. You get the double jointed knees. He does have knee pads, so it's going to hinder it just a little bit there. You do get the boot rotation, and you get the ankle pivot, and the ankles can move down and up, which is always beautiful to see. Just like other articulation with the rest of the AEW figure wave, I mean this. This is a beautiful piece, man. You can do all the poses you need. You don't have to worry about it. It can Judas affect your face off, and that's what you love to see out of a Chris Jericho action figure. So for your AEW Chris Jericho comparisons, guys, we have the Unrivaled Collection Series 1 on the left, and then we have the little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho on the right ringside exclusive, and you guys can see, I mean, again, they're the exact same figure except with different head sculpts, and you guys can let me know down in the comment section below which head sculpt you like better. I do believe I like the uh, Collection 1 on the on the left there, but you guys can let me know what you think down in the comment section below. You know, it's two different things. You got happy, you got pissed off there, so you guys can let me know, but yes, everything is pretty much the exact same. I'm pretty sure there's no other differences between the figures there, so that is our ringside exclusive Jericho. And then here's the new Chris Jericho up next to his opponent at Double or Nothing, which this event is based off of, or which these attires are based off of, which is Kenny Omega. Which I think these work out alright. Again, Kenny Omega is definitely way too pale, but I, I like the way these two stack up against each other. And if you guys missed our AEW ringside exclusive for a little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho figure comparison, here he is up next to his Mattel counterpart, and uh, he is standing a little bit taller, or maybe not He's just, I think what it is is the AEW figure torsos are a little bit wider there, but I think it's looking pretty good right there. You guys get a little uh, comparison shot between the two. That does it for our Chris Jericho figure comparison. So with that being said, let's go ahead and rank AEW Unrivaled Collection Series 1 from worst to best. Alright guys, it is time to rank Unrivaled Collection Series 1 from worst to best. Now you guys know how these work. This is going to be my own personal opinion, ranking this collection from the worst figure to the best figure. Now again, if something comes in at number 1, it doesn't mean it has zero flaws. And if it comes in at the bottom, it doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad figure. It's just compared to the rest of the collection. You know the criteria for this. It comes down to accessories, head sculpt, poseability, excitement level for the figure, need upon the figure, ability to use it in the pick fed. All of that stuff comes into, into consideration when I'm doing these rankings. So that being said, guys, let's start off with the number six spot, and for me, it is going to be Brandy. Now, the reason that I am saying Brandy is because she comes with zero accessories. She's kind of difficult to stand with these heels, you know? I think the articulation on this figure is fantastic, and I'm actually really happy to have a Brandy Rhodes. Now, did we need her in Series 1? Would it have been better to get, you know, maybe the first women's champion, or maybe some other talent that could have got in here, possibly? Or maybe even another women's talent? I still like the figure. I am just more excited for the rest of the wave, and I don't know when I'll actually use this. And so for that reason, I did want to put her at the bottom of the ranking, even though this is a damn good figure, and I love the double jointed knees on this. The posability is actually really good. I just do not like the ankles right here. And it's not necessarily her fault because it's heels, and that's what she wore, but, you know, I, somebody's got to be at the bottom. Now, coming into the number five ranking has got to be Chris Jericho. Now, for me, Chris Jericho would have been higher on the list probably if, uh, you know, I didn't have the ringside exclusive. I have the ringside exclusive, a little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho over here, and uh, for that reason, this not 
knocks it down a peg. It's just a new head sculpt. The jacket is not the best, which probably would have put this figure a lot higher on the list had it been a cloth jacket or something like that. But uh, Chris Jericho does come in at number five, and uh, it's still a really damn good figure. And if you guys missed out on the ringside exclusive, this is a great figure to get. And you can get the AEW World Championship if you can find the uh, the Chase version and the 1 in 1,000 or whatever that is. But there is Chris Jericho. Coming in at number four, guys, we're getting into the nitty gritty. I went with Nick Jackson. Now, Nick Jackson comes in at number four, and I love this figure. I think that both Young Bucks were fantastic. I think that the only thing holding this figure back is the head sculpt. Now, it's not a bad head sculpt. I just wish he wasn't doing the grimacing face. He still has really good articulation. I love that we have Young Bucks finally. I think that is just so epic. I think what the big deal is is that the uh, the head sculpt. The head sculpt is not as good as his brother Matt's, and that is why he is at number four for me. But Nick Jackson is still a strong figure, and I cannot wait to use this guy in the pick fed. Coming in at number three, guys, we have the American Nightmare Cody, and I like this figure a lot. I think it's a really strong figure in the set. I like the torso. I like the head sculpt. Again, not a perfect head sculpt by any means. I like the attire and everything. Excitement level for this figure was up there, but not as high as others. And I think that there could have been better likeness in the head sculpt. I still think it's a very, very strong figure. I love the attire. Like, the white boots are so clean. The blue and gold, I love this pattern with the snake skin and that you guys know the typical Cody Rhodes attire. I mean, it's, it is a beautiful specimen of the figure. I love the way the Iron Man Championship looks on the figure, but he had to come in at the number three spot. And now we are down to two and one. And with these figures down to two and one, you guys are probably assuming that Kenny Omega is going to take the number one spot. But for me, guys, I am coming in with Kenny Omega at number two and Matt Jackson at number one. Now, you guys are probably like, what in the absolute hell? But I honestly cannot put this Kenny Omega, I cannot in, in my own good sense, in my right mind, put this Kenny Omega at number one when I think that the head sculpt could have been better. I think the skin tone could have been better. I love the shooter hands. I love the V-trigger hands and the shooter hands. They're, they're freaking fantastic. I love the attire. I love this pink attire. It's one of my favorite attires. I love the way the figure poses around. It feels good in the hand. I mean, every figure in this wave is feels good in the hand, but I just do not think it would be fair to put this at number one given the, the skin tone problem. It definitely has the worst skin tone out of all of them, and I'm just not a big fan of the head sculpt. I think it has likeness to Kenny, but I think that if this figure had been released the way it looked at New York Toy Fair, it would undoubtedly be number one without even a, a blink of an eye. It would definitely be number one, but since it has the skin tone problems, they don't have the details in the hair, the head sculpt doesn't have the likeness, the beard is too dark, I cannot, in my honest opinion, put this thing at number one, but I still love it. I still think it's great. I still think that we're going to get great Kenny Omega figures coming in the future, but I could not put it at number one for now, so at number one has to be Matt Jackson. I think that the Matt Jackson figure is a perfect figure from head to toe. Maybe the torso is a little bit ripped up, but that's what you're going to get in action figure form most of the time. So with Matt Jackson, he has to be number one. I think it looks just like Matt Jackson. You get the cloth goods jacket, which is a very highly detailed jacket. It looks so fantastic on the figure. I love the entrance. It, it's just a very high quality jacket. The posability is insane. I love the way it looks. I love the white attire, and I just love it. I think I think I am super excited about these Young Bucks figures, and actually, I did a poll on my Instagram yesterday talking about which one was the best one, and everybody voted Kenny Omega pretty much, and the Young Bucks got the least amount of votes, which I thought was absolutely absurd, but for me, in my opinion, I went with Matt Jackson number one. So just to recap, Brandy Rhodes comes on at six, Chris Jericho is at five, Nick Jackson is at four, Cody Rhodes is at three, Kenny Omega is two, and Matt Jackson is your number one figure in AEW Unrival Collection Series 1. But that is going to finish up our 2-in-1 AEW and Rival Collection Series 1 reviews. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. I had a ton of fun reviewing this set. I'm so excited for the future of this wave. Now, if you guys want to complete the set, you definitely got to pick up Brandy and Chris. If you guys want to put Brandy up next to Cody. If you guys missed out on the ringside exclusive Chris Jericho, then the Chris Jericho is a must cop. But I think the whole line is amazing. I cannot wait to see the improvements. I can't wait to see Series 2 and how they improve the line and where they go from here. Hopefully, we can get this skin tone situation figured out, but I think this wave is going to be excellent, man. I'm super excited for the future. I think all of them look great. I cannot praise these figures enough. They do have their flaws. They are absolutely not perfect figures. This is not a perfect wave whatsoever, but for a first wave, I think they absolutely nailed it. They knocked it out of the park, and I cannot wait for the rest, and I am definitely going to be buying every figure that is released. But if you guys would like to pick up any of the figures from this video, if you guys want to pre-order Series 2 featuring MJF, John Moxley, Adam Hangman, Page, and more, go over to Ringside Collectibles, guys. Use promo code MDTOYS to 
save yourselves 10%. What did you think of my ranking? I would love to know your ranking of the figures down in the comment section below. Were you shocked by the Matt Jackson number one? I'd like to know. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Go find these hoes at Walmart if you can. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.